All right. Okay, can you give us some examples of some behaviors that you've noticed that all the very successful people that you've worked with have? Well, yeah, look, the, the list is long because it's a complex question, but um, I will tell you that um, they are almost all, I'll leave the psychological stuff aside, uh, they are almost all um, great sales people, so they make themselves, train themselves, condition themselves to be um, very capable persuaders, um, more, if you look at, say, Inc. 500 list the 500 fastest growing small companies in the country. Uh, what you're going to find is the overwhelming majority of those owner CEOs came up through the sales path. They didn't come up through finance and accounting. They didn't come up through management. They came up through sales. And, and actually, if you go to either the Forbes 400 list of the richest people in America, or you go to the Fortune 500 CEOs, you're going to see that bias. That's why really, all kidding aside about the MBA thing, the MBA thing is great if somebody wants a job. If somebody wants to either be an entrepreneur or they want to run the show, the MBA is the wrong path. All the MBAs are working for entrepreneurs. Um, and, and most of them came up from a sales background. Um, in, like in my field of direct response copywriting, one of the great commonalities is that all the top copywriters sold stuff nose to nose, toes to toes, either on a living room floor or in a showroom or in a store environment. So like I always tell people, you would do, it's fine if you want to spend a fortune and send your kid to Harvard, but what you ought to do first is at least make them put in a year selling water purifiers or burglar alarms or vacuum cleaners or something uh, nose to nose with mom and pop in the house because in all probability 15 years later he's going to tell you the education he got the year in direct sales was more useful to him than the education that he got at Harvard. So a, a sales orientation is a biggie. Um, one that we kind of, we had a little lunch conversation about it at the very end of lunch and it is very specifically relevant to your business. So, is a a lack of a, a lack of squeamishness about what they do. So, to elaborate, for a variety of reasons, most people. Somebody mentioned Zig earlier. You know, Zig's one of the three great Zig sayings is timid salespeople have skinny kids. Um, most people pull their punches. Um, um, it's why, for the same reason, generally speaking, you're better off giving somebody a self-defense product than you are teaching them to do self-defense because if you teach them how to gouge the person's eyes out, most people, when push comes to shove, you know, they won't do it. Uh, um, most people are squeamish about um, money. They have money issues, so they pull their punches, and they're squeamish about doing what's necessary in order to achieve maximum sales and marketing effectiveness in their business. So in this field, there is, somebody asked me at lunch, is the best way still to scare them, and I said, yeah. I mean, there's an aspirational aspect to what you do here, but to get their attention, you gotta scare them and because more people respond by fear of loss than they do benefit or desire for gain uh, we're far more motivated uh, uh, to action by our fears than by anything else and, and and so there's a certain ambulance chasing aspect to this business that if you're if you're timid or wimpy or uncomfortable with it uh, it will be in your way. 
so like a great virtue of online marketing is immediacy. So you have the ability to see a news item at 10 o'clock this morning and be communicating with your prospects about it at 10.02. Now, now that's a great virtue of online marketing that most marketers do a very poor job with. In politics, the really smart guys get it. Uh, during the Clinton campaign, not Hillary Bill. Um, you know, Carvel created the war room and their entire premise was uh, 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 29 minutes or less response to everything. So anything that happens pro or con that affects this campaign, we're communicating with the media and the public full bore within 29 minutes and they staffed to do it accordingly. Uh, Rove very similarly for, for Bush. And, and those two guys are in my opinion the smartest two marketing guys in politics. Uh, is Carville on the left and Rove on the right, so whichever you are. They're almost interchangeable, the two of them. Rove knows more about direct mail. Um, uh, and so you have this opportunity. So there's a news item about young girl being lured from MySpace to meet man in park and delivered, comes back home, cut up in seven pieces in a sack. You now have an ability to comment about that like now and you wouldn't be as inelegant as I just was, um, but you don't want to be too elegant either. Um, in the fire alarm business, I have a client, not much left that business anymore because of smoke detectors, but there's a couple big companies that still sell full-blown, very expensive home fire alarm systems. It tends to be an eight to $10,000 sale um, done at the kitchen table. And um, in, 40 years in that business. Nobody's been able to close sales without the flip book of burn victims. And you gotta be able to turn those pages and watch the blood drain and the look on the face of the person across the table at looking at the really horrid pictures in order to convince somebody to put in a full-blown fire alarm system. And a person in that business has to decide that um, that the that they genuinely believe they are doing sufficient good to justify the strategy and tactics that are necessary to achieve optimum results. Because if they pull their punches, um, and so to use that narrow example, if somebody goes out and makes presentations to sell fire alarms and refuses to show the burn victim pictures or stops the minute she goes, ooh, instead of turning five more pages. They ought not be out there. And they ought not be out there for two reasons. Their self-interest, because they're not going to make enough money. They're not going to do well, back to your question. And they're going to let somebody get away whose house now burns down two days later and kills everybody, and it could have been prevented. So they ought not be out there. Right? And so the really successful people in every field now, to broaden it back out, have no squeamishness whatsoever about the making of money and about the doing of what is necessary to get optimum results in whatever field they're in. 